working on this all week. I have to preface this with saying that it is absolutely impossible to exactly predict what's going to happen with the weather months out. It's why many meteorologists shy away from seasonal forecasts because there's a big chance you're going to get it wrong. But mm -hmm. you guys know I like a challenge. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the questions I get the most as a meteorologist is what's going to happen this winter. Yes. Everybody wants to know. So I looked at three main things when I made this forecast. I looked at the past, I looked at oceanic patterns, and I looked at the atmosphere. And this is what I found. Here in Georgia, we enjoy relatively mild winters compared to the rest of the country. Or at least that's what we like to think, right? Wait. <laughs> Remember when almost a foot of snow fell in December just two years ago? Or how about the famous snowpocalypse in 2014 that left the entire city in shambles for days? As we've learned over the past decade, no two winters are alike. So what can we expect this year? The first place we look for a winter indicator is the Pacific Ocean. It covers 30% of the Earth and has a huge impact on weather here in the United States. This year, there's a big warm pool of water right over Alaska. This warm pool can have a big effect, believe it or not, on Arctic air, which is usually trapped at the northernmost latitudes near the poles. That warm pool of water, it promotes a high pressure over Alaska, which can displace the Arctic air into the eastern United States. Here in Georgia, we'll be right at the southern tip of that Arctic air, which could mean a much stormier winter. I also dove almost 100 years into the past to find clues about the upcoming months. The summer and fall of 1925 were very similar to this year. They were both hot and very dry. So I looked at winter of 1925 and one major thing stood out to me. January was a very wet month. There's also a phenomenon known as stratospheric warming happening right now. It means that mid levels of the atmosphere are warming and it translates to extreme cold at the Earth's surface two to three weeks down the road. Remember the polar vortex? Stratospheric warming is a good indicator that the polar vortex is on the way. I combined all these factors to come up with a general forecast for winter 2020. Overall, it will be pretty mild through mid to late December, but by the end of the year, the polar vortex will arrive and that cold shot of air will be in place through January, making a very cold start to the year. The good news is I do not see a long lasting winter. Temperatures should bounce back to average or above average through the month of February. Now, wow. the one thing that everyone wants to know is the big S word, will it snow? Well, if that forecast is true and we see a very cold and wet January, the chances that we'll get at least one measurable snowfall are good. Well, a lot of school kids in the area could be very excited about that. Wearing the that, pajamas inside perhaps. out. You know, what you're doing, I know you said that a lot of meteorologists don't like to do this, but how is this any different from Palmer's Almanac or we rely on Punxsutawney Phil, who has no science to it at all? Right. It, you know, there's not really a way to accurately predict that far out, but we can always look at the past, at trends, and at what's currently going on to get an idea. And I think for those that, people at home, they're not going to, to, you know, be mad if you get it wrong. They want to know what could what happen. you can expect. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. Well, so, thank you so much for that. Yeah. Fascinating look Excellent at job. And what we have be, in store. It's also going to be posted on our CBS46.com website. and .com, yes. Yeah. For sure. All right, Ella, thank you very much.